the switch. Hi everybody, it's Andrea and welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, I look a right state, I know. I've just had a shower and I'm going to do my reading wrap up for March. Now I was going to put on makeup and everything and make myself look pretty and zoom it in nicely, but do you know what? Jennifer's just had a big nightmare and yeah, I thought, bugger it, I'll just do it like this. You're not interested in me. Anyway, you just want to see what I've been reading. I read 22 books in March. Do you know what? I think I've only got like 14 and I finished my challenge so I'm gonna have to up my challenge uh, by a bit because I'm still reading quite a lot at the moment still colouring loads as well so let's start so the first book I read in March was The Titanic Conspiracy um, cover-ups and mysteries of the world's most famous disaster by Robin Gardner and Dan Van De Vat. saw this on Steve Donahue's channel I'm a big Steve Donahue fan I love his channel because he always finds something to read on there I sort of tend to binge watch a load of videos in one go. Uh, so basically it tells the story of the Titanic, um, the people who escaped, the people who died, um, those who perhaps should have done more, those who should have helped more, were, were the ships swapped, which I don't personally believe, I think that's just a load of nonsense, uh, and so on. But it was a good read and I got this pick, cheap, picked this up cheap on eBay. It's a bit battered. I picked it up with another one, um, which I haven't read yet, but hopefully we'll get to this month. So I did enjoy that one, so. Uh, the second book I read was book one of a series by Amanda Emily. This is called Bad to the Crone and it's about this girl called Scout who was, um, who has magic. She was abandoned as four year old. She was left at a fire station without any um, information. Nobody knows the names or anything and they named her Scout um, after Scout from To Kill a Mockingbird Bird by Harper Lee and her surname is now Randall and basically she joins a group of people called the Spells Angels. Yes they are a motorcycle gang who fight um, paranormal activity and she moves to this small town um, which is on a paranormal nexus and starts helping out all the time wanting to learn about her history so there is a murder she, they literally she stumbles over a body and they have to try and find out who the killer or what the killer was which of course they do she means a guy, a guy who calls himself gunner his name is graham jr and they fall in love but he is a shifter and she is a witch but there's more to her Again, No Crones About It is book two in the series and No Crone Unturned is book three. Again, same premise is the fact that she's slowly finding out bits more about her and there's a murder in the town, somebody turns up dead and they go and sort it and they find other um, creatures, like vampires and things like that. There's a ghost and so on and it turns out that in one of these two books, I think it's the second one, one of the people who was murdered turns out to be her uncle her real biological uncle so she starts finding out a bit about her family so next i read a 10 book box set of cozy mysteries by agatha frost this is the julie south series there's at least 20 in the series i'm currently reading 11 to 20 i have read 1 to 10 and um, basically this tells the story of a girl named julia south who moves back to perrydale and opens a cafe after her 12-year marriage has failed when her husband runs off with his secretary funny that um in the very first book and i'll just give you an overview of the first book just because there's so many of them in the series would be here all year in the first book the organist at the local church is found murdered and nobody knows who did it or why but it turns out this woman Gertrude had a big secret now on the day we joined Julia in Perrydale a new neighbour moves into a cottage down the lane from her and his name is Barker Brown and he's the new detective inspector however he is not making any um way through the the mystery in solving Gertrude's killer so Julia starts investigating and in between making the most gorgeous cakes and things and baking and running her cafe she goes out and solves the murder so first of all she doesn't get on with Barker she thinks he's arrogant a bit standoffish but in the end they fall in love surprise surprise 
she has an extended family her sister sue lives there her mother died when she was a child and her grandmother dotty still lives there or dot still lives there as well as her father who married um a woman her age she's about in her late 30s early 40s and lives up at Perrydale manor um and they don't get on they haven't spoken for years so in that series we've got espresso and evil lemonade and lies pancakes and corpses donuts and deception chocolate cake and chaos shortbread and sorrow which is uh, shows goes up to scotland for a weekend and there's a murder up there fruit cake and fear birthday cake and bodies macaroons and mayhem and gingerbread and ghosts so those are all stories in that series they're all very readable very quick reads which is probably why I'm doing so well but I tend to start reading them and I can't put them down because they're just so easy to read um yeah very good I'm really enjoying the series I really really am so I can't wait for next month's wrap up because my favorite book of the series so far has been in this in the second set and I'll admit that and I'll tell you all about that one I'll try and give you I've got to get back into the habit of making notes on the ebooks because I haven't got the back of the book to read now on this <coughs> 10 book box set there is a bonus book called vanilla bean vengeance and this is the story of and i'm going into it um claire harris who crafts candles she actually works in a candle factory um at dreams of opening her own shop in her home village up in the north she can't afford to sadly however the um woman that runs the candle factory ends up dead and Claire and her friend starts investigating to find out what exactly happened and what the reason is because she doesn't want to lose her job because she's trying to save as much money as she can. Um, she does solve the mystery along with one of her friends and in the end she finds, finds out that her family have bought her the lease to this shop so she can open up her candle uh, business. So I'm hoping to get some more in that one because I quite enjoyed that one as well. I then read The Crimes of Jack the Ripper by Paul Rowland. This is a big version. There are smaller versions as well. There are photographs in it and there are photographs of the bodies. So I'm not going to show you too much, but it's an A4 size picture uh, uh, book. Basically just goes over the crimes. It's nothing special. It's nice to add to the Ripper shelf. Look, look forward to next month if you were interested in Jack the Ripper because there is a huge Jack the Ripper book haul coming next month. Um, I haven't done a book haul this month because I only bought two so I'm going to roll them over to next month and do a huge Jack the Ripper book haul along with any other books I may buy because there are a few I need to get this month. There's the new Jodie Taylor and I need to buy the Stephen King for this month's Stephen King read. And that's one I haven't got to show you because I've left it downstairs but we'll talk about that in a minute. I then I started to reread my Marin Row book collection. It's not going well. I'm only on the second book. <laughs> but the first one I picked up to read was Marilyn in the Last 24 Hours by Alan Silverman. Um, it's a terrible book. If I could have given it minus five stars, I would. Um, very little, very conspiracy or orientated. There are pictures of her funeral um, and there's one picture of her. Well, there's a few pictures of her. There's some pictures there. It's about the best bit of the book. Um, and then there's the picture of a bedroom and the stuffed toys and so on um, but basically it follows the conspiracy theories that were outed in the 60s and 70s by such idiots as Robert Slater and Norman Mailer. Now Robert Slater started this whole industry but we'll talk about him more when I get onto his books I'm not there yet. If you are starting to collect Marilyn and you want every single book by it, it's not over expensive. But if you're looking for truth and honesty and non-conspiracy theories, and you're always going to get conspiracy theories and I, I've resigned myself to that fact. But if you're looking for other books, check out my 10 books you should read on Marilyn Monroe. It probably has changed and I will update it, I think. I think I might update that soon. Hmm. I'll look through what I, I, I put on there. And then I might redo it. But I have got a couple of books I haven't read yet that I need to read. It's one particularly big one. So I'll look at doing a new version of that shortly. So yeah, if you only want the best books that tell you a lot of information, don't bother. If you are a completist, I used to be. I'm not so much now because some of them are so, so many of them are badly self-published that they're not worth having. Yes, pick it up. But if you're not, don't worry. Okay, like so, oh hello, it started playing on its own, I'll be back in a sec.
I do apologise. I put the book down on the remote control for the uh, fire stick. After that, I read a book named Rosemary's Gravy by Melissa F. Miller. Again, this is a cosy mystery. This is about a girl who has two sisters. Her name is Rosemary and her sister's name is Sage and Time. Their parents were hippies and ran a, a hippie resort. It was all natural, organic stuff. Well, nothing wrong with that at all. Um, however, they owe a lot of, they kept expanding and they owe a lot of money and it's in debt. So instead of facing it and trying to sort it out, they ran away on a boat and left their daughters in charge. So their daughters have taken jobs away from what they normally do in order to try and pay off the money that's owed before they lose the business because they would like to keep it. So there are three books in the series. I've read two, but the other one won't load for some reason. So I've got to try and get book three back up. So in book one, we meet Rosemary. She is a holistic chef. She cooks for a movie star and I can't remember her name. So I will go in and have a look at it. I'm terrible with names. I want to say Amanda, but it doesn't say her. Yeah. Let's have a look doesn't actually say so yeah doesn't actually say can't remember what the name is anyway so she's not a very nice person she's just a nasty diva um but she's very very careful on what she eats um she's allergic to peanuts and i think she's vegan as well not that there's anything wrong with that i still don't have a problem with it and you know so she is murdered and rosemary is at first suspected because it's quite a warm time in california and she's cooked uh, basically what they had for thanksgiving at this person's request and they suspect it was the gravy however it turns out that somebody had put peanut oil in her wine and of course she died from that so rosemary is going out with the movie star's son felix not the movie star's son the movie star's husband's son felix it's very confusing and for a bit until of course um things happen that she doesn't like and they split up um but in the end she figures out who killed her killed the woman clears her name clears the father's name and clears the son's name as well so it was enjoyable it was nothing special it was all right we go back to amanda emily and we carry on with cut to the crone and romance in the crone again this carries on with scout and her team of spells angels they are tackling some pretty big vampires in these books um one of which uh scout knew when he when she was when that vampire was alive and he wants her to become a vampire as well and she finds out who she is but in finding out who she is and how her magic works and how she can use it she alerts the people who are after her for their own ends that she is still alive and still around and where she is unfortunately that's the end of the series and i'm gutted because i really want to know more um i don't know when the next one's out i'm gonna have to have a look to see uh, when it's going to be because i would like to know more i'm really enjoying that it's it's very simple but it's really clever and my mum's read all these books the the cozy ones and she loves them as well so yeah we're both enjoying reading them i can't keep up with her she reads all the time i do other things like look after jennifer and and color and, and make videos about other things and work <laughs> my mum just reads but that's where i get it from i guess my mum and dad and the book I haven't got here, and I will put a picture of it here, um, is I read Stephen King's The Long Walk. So this was written under the pen name of Richard Bachman, and it tells the story of a hundred young men who are contestants in something called The Long Walk. And The Long Walk is a 450 mile walk across Maine and that sort of area. Um, basically, they will win a lot of money if they can complete the walk. However, it is more of a last man standing wins than actually having to complete the 450 miles from what i understand um what i gather but as long as you're a last man standing you've won so it's you basically they walk into their death because who can walk 450 miles without stopping and that is what they do they can't fall below four miles an hour if they do they get what's called a ticket three tickets and they're out of the race however this is where the twist comes in they don't just get moved out to the side and have to leave the race they are actually shot and killed 
now this is a i actually enjoyed this one it's, it's kind of almost hunger games-esque as is the running man which also a man it but where you're playing a game to survive and but the only difference with this one is they had to sign up for it they do it voluntarily so we're following a young man named Ray Geraghty who is from this area of Maine so there's lots of posters out for him lots of people so you know and there's a bit of a darkness at the end as with all King Backman books in the fact that he is the last man standing but as he's walking he's going mad from what I gather because something black is at his side something dark and he starts to run so you don't know what it is and it just ends like that it's I actually really enjoyed it I really really enjoyed that one the second book in Melissa F Miller's uh, We Sisters 3 stories which is Rosemary Sage and Time is A Sage of Innocence and this tells the story of Sage who is a nanny for a very rich couple in another city um, he is a golfer professional golfer he wins tournaments goes out on tours another golfer is murdered using one of his clubs so because he's going to be removed from the tours he's losing all his sponsorship sage and his caddy are fired so because they can't afford to keep them on and they were struggling anyway even before this so sage and the caddy decide to try and solve the murder and find out what happened to this other golfer that nobody particularly liked and it turns out that this other golfer was blackmailing um chip which is the guy whose club was used to kill him along with other golfers so there's a lot of people who have got motives anybody any one of the golfers could have got hold of chip's club because they just left in a room in the golf house where the guy was killed the clubhouse so they go around and they find out who it killed and it also comes out that chip had a secret that nobody expected but it all works out in the end so those are the 22 books yes there's a lot of books and i know i haven't gone into them in any depth i will try and do better next month that i read in march plans for april i have if i go to i've read two this month my goal i'm on 82 percent i've read 62 of 75 books there's only 13 to go and it's not going to take me long that'll be done this month so i need to up my challenge so i'm going to edit my goal i'm going to do this now to 100 actually i'm going to really go for it i'm going to go for 150 there we go and i don't know if you can it'll show you because it's quite bright no it's not going to show you it might do hang on there you go 62 of 150 there we go with that very glamorous picture of me that dates back whew, over 10 years um yes so it says to read two i'm at 41 percent now so i've really knocked myself back but if i'm carrying on the way i am doing this year so far it's not going to be any problem so plans for april i've already read two books well actually it's more than that now because i've read a couple more of those um Julia South uh, Mysteries by Agatha Frost and I'm going to write them down. I'm going to read this book on Titanic which you saw in my haul. It's covered in dust. I've been there that long. That month and I'm going to, although I've read one Jack the Ripper book this month already, I am going to try and read this one as well which you also saw in that haul. I am also in uh, the process of reading this one is the Marilyn one, which is Marilyn Monroe, Pocket Essentials, Paul Donnelly. It's not going to take long. I, I should have finished this last month, really. I just put it down and never bother picking it up again. So I'll probably finish that. On top of that, we got whatever Stephen King is, and I can't remember, and I haven't even got it yet, so I'm going to have to go and find. I did make a list, but I don't know where it is. Um, on top of that, trying to keep up with the cosy mysteries with Mum, I'm going to finish the last of the ten Julia South I've got, the Agatha Frost ones, the Take Me Up to Book 20. Uh, and I have got a lot more of those sorts of books to read um anything else I want to try and make a bit of a dent in Agatha Christie's complete secret notebooks but I'm, that's what I'm just dipping into here and there any other plans reading wise I've got a ton of books 
to read on top of the bookcases that I haven't read. It's my not read pile. So I'm going to aim to read two of those. And the reason I say two is because if they're physical books and it's harder for me to read physical books because if I'm downstairs and Jennifer's there she wants to sit on me and it's, so it's easier for me to hold my phone and read and if I'm in bed I do read but I don't read for very long because I get dopey because <laughs> I am dopey <laughs> I'm enough of me waffling on that was what I read in, a, in March and I know it's a lot and I haven't done much but I am going to like I said um I just can't think of what I'm doing. <sighs> Write in my notebook a little bit about all the um, books that are Kindle books. <laughs> I sort of can't even think straight today. So I'm going to start that now because I know there's a couple to go in there. I'm going to put these other ones away and I am going to sit and colour and watch some colouring videos and then before I go to sleep I'm going to read. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Like I said I will make the next one a bit more in depth. I'll try and put pictures up here of the Kindle books and of course the um, Stephen King one because I actually forgot to bring it up because I am it's downstairs and I'm reading the second one in it even though it's not on the Stephen King list. It's just something I pick up and read every now and again. So yes, look out for a big um, big book haul next month of mostly Jack the Rippers, but there will be a couple of others in there, I would imagine. I love books. I will see you soon. Bye, everybody.